Apollo 13 is famously described as a successful failure. It was NASA's third moon landing mission, but the astronauts never made it to the lunar surface. During the mission's dramatic series of events, an oxygen tank explosion almost 56 hours into the flight forced the crew to abandon all thoughts of reaching the moon. The spacecraft was damaged, but the crew was able to seek cramped shelter in the lunar module for the trip back to Earth before returning to the command module for an uncomfortable splashdown. The mission stands today as an example of the dangers of space travel and of NASA's innovative minds working together to save lives on the fly. The Apollo 13 mission celebrated its 50th anniversary on April 11, 2020. The impression that lunar landings were almost routine in nature was bolstered by the overwhelming success of the Apollo 11 mission in July 1969 and the subsequent Apollo 12 mission. However, as the Vietnam War clashes raged on, public attention began to shift away from the Apollo missions. Furthermore, shrinking budgets posed a significant threat to the remaining Apollo missions, ultimately resulting in the cancellation of Apollo 18, 19, and 20. Notably, those who held superstitious beliefs found further cause for concern in the forthcoming Apollo launch due to the pervasive unlucky associations with the number 13. These apprehensions were somewhat justified when a measles scare led to the replacement of command module pilot Ken Mattingly with Jack Swigert. On April 11, 1970, the powerful Saturn V rocket carrying the Apollo 13 mission launched from Kennedy Space Center, propelling astronauts Jim Lavelle, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert on what was intended to be humanity's third lunar landing. Unfortunately, the mission to explore the Fra Moro region of the Moon did not go as planned. What many viewed as a now routine mission soon had millions around the globe glued to television sets watching and hoping for a positive outcome for one of the most intense episodes in the history of space exploration. Econ, GNC. Looks good, Flight. Looks good, Flight. Okay, sir. The Apollo 13 astronauts were Commander James Lavelle, Lunar Module Pilot Fred Hayes, and Command Module Pilot Jack Swigert. At age 42, Lavelle was the world's most traveled astronaut when he joined the Apollo 13 mission. With three missions and 572 SPASA flight hours under his belt, Lavelle participated in Apollo 8, the first mission to circle the moon, and flew two Gemini missions including a 14-day endurance run. Prior to the Apollo 13 mission, 36-year-old Hayes served as the backup lunar module pilot for the Apollo 8 and Apollo 11 missions. Hayes was a fighter pilot in the U.S. Marine Corps before joining NASA as a test pilot. He was selected for the manned space program in 1966. At the same time as Swigert, Apollo 13 was Hayes's only trip to space. Apollo 13 was Swigert's first trip to space at age 38. He had been part of the support crew for Apollo 7 and was initially Apollo 13's backup command module pilot. He was asked to join the crew 48 hours before launch time after the original command module pilot, Ken Mattingly, was exposed to German measles. The mission started auspiciously with an early shutdown of one of the second stage's J-2 engines during launch. To rectify the situation, an additional 34 seconds were added to the burn time of the remaining four engines, along with an extra 9 seconds for the third stage precisely positioning Apollo 13 in its intended orbit. Subsequently, the mission transitioned into what increasingly resembled a routine journey. This prompted Joe Kerwin, the capsule communicator stationed in Houston, to announce that the spacecraft is in good shape, and he and his colleagues in the control space room. In real good shape as far as we're concerned, Jim. We're bored to tears down here. However, this monotony was abruptly shattered. Minutes later, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 13th, 
Apollo 13 was over 200,000 miles from Earth. The crew had just completed a television broadcast and was inspecting Aquarius, the landing module dot. The next day, Apollo 13 was to enter the moon's orbit. Lavelle and Hayes were set to become the fifth and sixth men to walk on the moon. But Destiny had different plans. At 9.08 p.m. about 56 hours into the flight an explosion rocked the spacecraft. Oxygen tank number two had blown up, disabling the regular supply of oxygen, electricity, light and water, dispelling any sense of boredom entirely. Indicators in the cabin illuminated, signaling the loss of two out of three fuel cells, prompting the crew to relay their significant issue to Houston. As they gazed outside at the command module Odyssey, Lavelle discerned that something was venting into space a crucial substance, oxygen, vital for the mission's success. They soon realized that the explosion in tank number two had inflicted damage upon tank number one, rendering the fuel cells unusable and imperiling the loss of both electrical power and water resources. With the lunar landing plans now nullified, Lavelle reported to Mission Control. Houston, we've had a problem here. The command module was leaking oxygen and rapidly losing fuel cells. The moon landing mission was aborted. Both the astronauts aboard Apollo 13 and NASA's ground personnel embarked on an exhaustive, round-the-clock effort to devise solutions that would ensure their safe return to Earth. One hour following the explosion, Mission Control issued instructions for the crew to relocate to the lunar module, which possessed an ample oxygen supply and employ it as a lifeboat. Never thought I'd have to use that as a lifeboat. The lunar module, originally designed solely for ferrying astronauts between the orbiting command module and the moon's surface, presented a challenging situation. Its power system was intended to sustain two individuals for a maximum of 45 hours. For the Apollo 13 crew's safe return to Earth, the landing module would need to support three astronauts for a minimum of 90 hours, while successfully navigating over 200,000 miles of space. Conditions within the lunar module proved demanding. The crew rationed their water intake to one-fifth and endured cabin temperatures just above freezing to conserve energy. A compatibility issue arose with the square lithium hydroxide canisters from the command module, which did not fit the round openings in the landing module's environmental system, posing a problem for removing carbon dioxide. Resourcefully, Mission Control improvised an adapter using materials available on board, and the crew replicated their solution. Navigation proved exceptionally complex. The landing module possessed a more rudimentary navigation system, necessitating manual calculations by both the astronauts and Mission Control to determine the required propulsion adjustments and direction changes for the spacecraft's journey home. On April 14, Apollo 13 conducted a swing around the moon. Switchard and Hayes captured images of the lunar surface, while Lavelle communicated with mission control, discussing the most challenging maneuver ahead. A five-minute engine burn crucial for providing the landing module with the necessary velocity to return home before exhausting its energy supply. Two hours after completing the lunar swing, using the sun as a reference point, the crew executed a successful firing of the landing module's small descent engine. This maneuver was a resounding success, setting Apollo 13 on its course back to Earth. On April 15, 1970, Apollo 13 found itself on the far side of the moon, precisely 254 kilometers above the lunar surface. Simultaneously, it soared to a staggering 248,655 miles above the Earth's surface. This remarkable milestone meant that the Apollo 13 crew achieved an extraordinary feat by setting a Guinness World Record for the farthest distance ever reached by humans from Earth. However, the conclusion of the space journey was yet to come. Huddled within the chilly confines of the lunar module for an enduring three days were Lavelle, Hayes, and Swigert. These trying conditions took a toll on Hayes, who fell ill with the flu. On the pivotal date of April 17, a last-minute navigational adjustment utilized Earth as a guide for alignment. Subsequently, the command module, now repressurized, was successfully brought back to full power, an hour preceding re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The lunar module was disengaged from the command module at nearly 1 p.m. on April 17, 1970. 
the spacecraft commenced its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Mission Control harbored concerns that the CM's heat shields might have sustained damage during the accident, leading to a nerve-wracking four-minute period without radio communication from the crew. Relief washed over as Apollo 13's parachutes came into view, signaling a safe descent. All three astronauts, against the odds, made a triumphant splashdown into the Pacific Ocean. Only when the crew was safely aboard the recovery ship USS Iwo Jima could everyone at NASA and around the world finally begin to exhale. The insights gained from Apollo 13's successful recovery from a near failure were swiftly implemented in the subsequent Apollo missions, and they still serve as the cornerstone for NASA's safety and mission assurance practices today. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. To stay updated with our latest content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. We appreciate your support. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want to share your thoughts on this topic, feel free to leave a comment below. We love hearing from our viewers. And remember, your feedback helps us create better content for you. So, until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep growing. See you in the next video.